Oh, I didn't see you there. I was trying to wipe off all these dang fingerprints on my Razorblade Stealth 2019. Hello everyone, my name is Andy Nguyen and today we're going to be reviewing the early 2019 version of the Razorblade Stealth, my favorite laptop for a creative professional. Let's just run down a quick list of the pros and cons just to appease all the people who do not have the time to sit with us today and getting into the details of this device. So pros, great form factor for the power and battery life. It has a, it has a dedicated graphics card in there so I really appreciate the small footprint. It has a clean aesthetic that does not scream gamer. It's a pretty muted logo. It's black on black. One of the best trackpads for Windows laptops. It's large, responsive. I love it. The dedicated graphics card really helps with Adobe Premiere exporting. Gives it a little extra kick. It's not enough to completely change the export times. It's only there to help a little bit. And that little bit of GPU power also allows me to play my, one of my favorite games, Overwatch, on this computer on the go. Accurate colors, 100% sRGB. It's a matte screen, so it kills a little bit of the reflections. It has thin bezels. Unfortunately, it has a thick chin on the bottom. It has two USB-A ports and two USB-C ports, so the best of both worlds. If you have USB-C peripherals, you don't need an adapter. But if you still have legacy USB-A peripherals, you can plug it straight in. The SSD drive is upgradable and I upgraded myself. I got the Samsung Evo M.2 NVMe SSD. Screen is pretty bright. The keyboard is backlit and RGB for all of you RGB fans out there. So let's get to the cons. This has the worst shift key I've ever seen in my entire life. They expanded the arrow keys. So there's individual up and down arrow but it cuts into the shift key. So now there's only half a shift key on the right side. The right shift key annoys me. I have to be a little bit more intentional when typing. There's no touchscreen. I don't use it often, but it'd be a nice to have. It can't charge via, via USB-C because of the power draw of the laptop. There's a little bit of power throttling in the BIOS that is not changeable for most people. There's a way to hack it, but I personally don't want to do that. One of the biggest cons is the price. It is the MacBook of the PC world. My model's MSRP is 1600. I was able to get it on sale for 1400, which is a little bit more reasonable of a price, but for what you get, if you took off the Razer branding, you could probably get it for 1100 or 200, maybe a slightly bigger chassis, but that's what you get when you want to buy a Razer. Those are the pros and cons. Let's get into the details. So I'll tell you my, my story about how I got to the Razorblade Stealth 2019. I started doing photography about 10 years back and after I was able to earn a little bit of money, I got a 13 inch MacBook Pro and I started to move to video. The program that I picked up was Adobe Premiere because I wanted to keep in the Adobe ecosystem and I quickly realized that Adobe Premiere does not play well with MacBooks. Export times were pretty horrendous. Scrubbing was okay, but I was having a lot of trouble editing videos. So I went on, I sold my MacBook Pro and I hunted for a new laptop and landed on the Dell XPS 15. It was the most professional looking, most powerful, thin and light to an extent laptop. It was able to replace the PC, so I decided to get that. So pretty powerful computer. But what I had learned quickly was that chassis, when, that chassis when doing video editing, heated up really bad. The CPU and the GPU would heat up so much that it would throttle down to maybe 30% of the capacity that I would have when it's not throttled. I would hit max temps three or four times in an editing session of two to three hours. And that happened way too frequently for me to be able to do my work. So when I was in danger of missing deadlines because my laptop kept overheating, I can't tell my client, hey, I need more time, my computer isn't working. That is not an acceptable excuse for a professional. So I decided to sell my Dell XPS 15 and consult my friends to build a monster editing PC. With the Intel i7-8700K, I overclocked it right as I got it to 4.7 gigahertz. I have 32 gigs of RAM, the GTX 1066 gig GPU in there, and tons of Samsung uh, SSDs. I wanted no stuttering, no issues with editing. I didn't have all that time to fiddle around with making sure my laptop was happy. But then I started to need a laptop again. So back to the search, and we ended up looking at various than the light laptops because at this point I didn't need a laptop to replace a computer but it was more so to supplement my big PC. My mobile editing would be pretty light but 
still powerful enough where I can open Adobe Premiere if I need to. So I was looking at the Huawei MateBook X Pro and that was a great laptop. I ended up buying it from the Microsoft store, but unfortunately for US citizens, the Trump administration had a trade war with China. So they actually ended up banning all Huawei products in America. So the Microsoft store pulled it off the shelves and I was very unsure about what would happen with my warranty and my repairs and all that. So I returned it. After I returned it, I had to go back to the drawing board in terms of like researching laptops. And the best option for me ended up being this laptop, the Razorblade Stealth 2019. A dedicated graphics card, it has the 1080p screen, has reasonable battery life, it plays games, which is a big plus, and it has this stronger GPU. There are other uh, laptops with, with the MX150 GPU in there, but they have a lower powered variant. So let's get into the long-term review of this laptop. I love the appearance. It's all black, it's matte, but unfortunately there's a little bit of fingerprinting. I just have to live with that. It's overall thin and light for the package because you do get a really powerful CPU and a powerful GPU, a decent GPU, and there's RGB backlighting. I personally don't mind that it's not single key RGB, but some people may. In terms of performance, I have the model with the eighth gen CPU. This is the Intel Core i7-8565U and it came stock with a 512 gig SSD. I have 16 gigs of RAM in there and it, it does everything I throw at it, albeit not as well as my big computer. I'm able to edit in Adobe Premiere. I can cut my 4K footage without bringing down the quality to one fourth. Just, you know, ins and outs, nothing too crazy. Here's a quick little test. I have a Premiere project, a 25 minute or a 1080p timeline with 4K footage in it. There are about three layers of color correction and coloring done to the clips. No crazy animations or anything like that, but just a basic YouTube video that I'd be exporting on a regular basis. And on the left, we have the full built out PC and you can see that it's just blazing through it. And the laptop, being that it's a lower powered CPU and it's just a weaker GPU, it's kind of struggling a little bit. Even with the MX150, I wouldn't really use these thin and light laptops as a main editing device. I just use it to support the big work that I'm doing on my main PC. So the PC is able to clear it in about a minute and you can see that the laptop is going and it looks to be an hour export. And that is pretty much in line with what I expect out of a laptop. So mainly it's just a device for me to cut footage on and do a little bit of work if I need to modify a quick project, but not a full edit from beginning to end, unless I'm in a pinch. But I am aware that it does thermal throttle. So in the BIOS, Razer locked down the CPU power so that it doesn't overheat. I would rather have consistent performance at a lower gigahertz than to have it run max and then throttle and I have to stop my work. And also the lifespan of the device. I was very worried about my Dell XPS 15 due to all the thermal throttle issues and overheating. But another thing on the performance is that you do need to plug it in to get full performance out of here. It is a very powerful laptop so it can't run 100% on battery. So for example, when I play Overwatch and I don't have it plugged in, even on low settings, I'm getting 30 FPS and it's literally unplayable. But when I plug it in, I can get steady 60 FPS on medium. And even if I push it to high, I can get 45 to 60 FPS. It jumps around a little bit too much, but these are just benchmarks for you to understand the difference between plugging in and not plugging in it. The Razer Blade Stealth has the higher power variant of the MX150 GPU. This is the 1D10 version and not the lower 1D12 version that other laptops have. And although this can play Overwatch, you will not be able to play AAA games. So if you're into those games, perhaps you want a full size 15 inch full powered gaming laptop rather than this is an ultra book at the end of the day so don't expect that kind of performance out of it other laptop manufacturers even remove the sd card slot and unfortunately this razor blade stealth is one of them i still have to use a dongle because of that but there are usb a ports that allow me to connect my wireless mouse dongle without issue if you were to have a wireless mouse dongle the flat one and attach it to a usb C to USB A adapter, it sticks out too much and I'm afraid of brushing up against it and snapping the USB C connector into the USB C port. And that's because most of the time these wireless mouse dongles are intended to stay on the laptop, but you can't really do that if you only have USB C. The Windows Hello sign in when using the webcam is pretty freaking fast. Logging in without having to type in my PIN or my password is very cool. But to finish the review, 
I chose this laptop despite the more expensive price, despite the smaller shift key on the right, because of the because of the overall package. It has great build quality. There's no flex in the chassis. The keyboard is reasonably comfortable to type on other than the shift key. The power is very welcome because I do a lot of work on Adobe Premiere and I can play games in a hotel room if I wanted. It also looks pretty sick. Like I really like the black aesthetic and I was willing to pay the higher premium because there was a $200 instant discount on it. At 1600 bucks, I don't think this is a great buy. So if you're looking at the current generation, the late 2019 version, there's not gonna be discounts on those. I would definitely recommend the early 2019 version because of the discount and buy it from a store that will repair it. That is one of the reasons why I stuck with this one because it was the most powerful Ultrabook that the Microsoft stores sold. The only reason I would consider Apple products is because the Apple store is physically close to my house and take it to the Genius Bar and they'll repair it. Sometimes it may take a long time, but at least there's a physical interaction. I don't have to ship it out and just hope it comes back. I've done that before on HP laptops and got my repairs done, but it took a long time to ship it there and then for them to ship it back. And I've had no issues with thermal throttling. I've been able to play my games. I've been able to edit. I've been able to edit more than I thought I would. And I've been able to game more than I thought I would. And it's fun to have a laptop again, to be able to type something up on the go. So at the end of the day, the reasons I chose this expensive Razor Blade Stealth 2019 was because it was the best performance to price ratio that I can find that fits my desires for a good looking device as well as to have the power to do the things that I need. And for I gave up the features that I didn't like touch screen and, the full, and be able to flip it backwards. That's something I personally don't need. So why pay into that and give up more important features like power of the GPU for other competitors? So that is my long-term review as a creative professional of the Razorblade Stealth early 2019 model. Let me know in the comments below if you have any comments on this device or want to talk about why you chose another device over this or if you're an Apple user and your experiences using the current version of Adobe Premiere that plays well with MacBooks. Let's nerd out with laptops because that's what I like to do. I like to talk about tech and we have the, a discussion in the comment section. Other people that come by and see the video can get different opinions and perspectives that can help their purchase decision. Please click like on this video if you like the content. Please click subscribe and the notification bell to not miss an update or a new video from me. And thank you for watching. Bye.